when you were at school, did you t- detect teachers um, were I, not so much perhaps they were racism, but they weren't spotting racism in the classroom? So there was racism and they weren't spotting it, so it's both. So I just have to make it clear, I truly believe anti-racism training should be mandatory. The biggest reason why is our frame of reference when it comes to racism in this country is overt racism. So that is racial prejudice that is obvious, deliberate and direct. However, as a nation, we transitioned from overt racism to covert racism after the change in equalities laws. And these laws ultimately fostered a culture of hiding and disguising racial prejudice as opposed to acknowledging it and rectifying it. Thus the emergence of covert racism, which is subtle racial prejudice. Uh, So give me an example of uh, covert racial prejudice that you've suffered, for instance. Oh, my gosh. Okay, well, I'll give you an obvious one. All lives matter. So, perfect example of racial prejudice. So that would be um, a direct response to the slogan, Black Lives Matter. So it's shrouded, as I've always said, it's shrouded in racial prejudice. Um, And what usually happens is racial prejudice is disguised, it's hidden, and it's often explained and justified in a way that society would deem acceptable. So when you say the term all lives matter, it's a factual statement, so therefore you can lead with it because it's a fact. But, of course, it is shrouded in racial prejudice because it's, it's in response to the term Black Lives Matter. So that's a perfect example of how racism can be very subtle and discreet. Let's bring you into the conversation. Um, you, you're a, you were at school until four years ago, 22-year-old. Yeah, uh, <laughs> so, look, best place than anyone here. Where was, which part of the country were you at school? I went to a very small school in south-east London. Right. Yes, it was, a, it was like 400 students in a school. Yeah. It was a private school. It wasn't very diverse. Right. So I didn't really notice these microaggressions, these racist microaggressions taking place in the school. But I do have friends, because now my friendship circle is very diverse. I've met all kinds of people from all kinds of backgrounds, when I'm abroad or in in London, wherever. And they have explained that they have suffered from these microaggressions. But I'm not sure how widespread the issue is in schools around the UK as to whether that should warrant compulsory or daily, whatever kind of training for teachers. Covert racism is prevalent within the UK, just so you know. That's your answer. Who does the training for the teachers? Who who should they be? So it would be someone like me. So, for example, an anti-racism consultant who would go into universities, higher education, and try to implement anti-racism initiatives. So it it would typically be a consultant of some form. Again, I, I'd never heard the expression, forgive me, microaggression, yes. racist microaggression. Does, it, does microaggression only apply in the world of race, or could that be applying to obesity Everything, or exactly. any form of abuse? Everything, this is why I don't Microaggression against use... gays? Yes, exactly. Right. This is why I don't use the term microaggression, because I could have a microaggression purely because you look very nice today, you're very composed, and I'm just going to give you a microaggression because I'm jealous. Mm-hmm. Anyone can have a microaggression. So I, what I try to do is just make sure we use specific language. And so the language we're actually talking about is covert racism, yeah. racial prejudice that is subtle and discreet, and it's also known as microaggressions or everyday racism. But the correct term is covert racism.